Hi, so this is the Cypher Explorer tool that I created. It's inspired by a Zodiac Cypher font that was created by Largo. He's a member of Mike Morford's forum at ZodiacKillerSite.com. He created this really nice Zodiac Cypher font for his own software tool called Peekaboo. It's a visualization tool for the ciphers, and uh, he's posted it up on Mike's forum, and I encourage you to look at his tool as well. The tool that I made is based on a version of his font that I adapted for web use. So you can use his font on the web now. And the, the purpose of the tool is to allow you to look at the Zodiac ciphers. And if you're trying to illustrate some aspect of the cipher text, you can use this, these highlighting tools uh, to mark them up. So what you can do with this is in the ciphers menu, you can pick one of the Zodiac ciphers. So here's the 408 the first cipher that he sent. It has a known solution, which is included in here. You can pick the plain text. So there's the known solution for the 408. Here's the 340, the second cipher that he sent. Here's the 13 symbol cipher that he sent, otherwise known as the my name is cipher. And then the last cipher he sent, the so-called map code, the 32-character cipher is also included. Let's look at the different ways you can highlight the cipher text. So here you can select from different highlighting modes. The first highlighting mode is just a simple pointer. Now when you're highlighting the cipher text, it'll use the foreground color that's indicated here and the background color that's indicated here. So now we have a black foreground and a white background. So when we go and we click on symbols, you'll notice that they're highlighted with those colors. You can change the colors just by clicking these icons and selecting from the color palette. Another way to pick colors is just to click random. Then when you click around, it'll use those colors. Another way to highlight the cipher text is to use the paintbrush. To use the paintbrush, you find where you want to start, and then you click, and then as you drag your mouse around, the highlights will follow your mouse cursor. This is starting to get cluttered with highlights, so let's erase some of this stuff. One way to do this is to click this Erase checkbox, then, since I'm still in paintbrush mode, once I click, I can start painting with the eraser, basically. Now let's look at other ways that we can highlight the cipher text. Let's pick our rectangular selection mode. In this mode, once you click, it'll start making a rectangular region. Then when you click again, it'll set that rectangle. So this is a quick way to mark different rectangular regions of the ciphertext. Now if you want to start over, you can just click Clear Highlights in this Edit menu. Now let's look at n-gram mode. n-gram mode lets you select all occurrences of patterns of symbols. When you move your mouse cursor over a symbol, all of the symbols of that type are highlighted. So as I scroll through this, you can see that it's highlighting all occurrences of the selected symbol. Then when I click, it highlights all of the symbols and it keeps those highlights. So let's pick a random color. Now I want to highlight all the pluses. It's a quick way to highlight all instances of that symbol. There's all the G's. Now let's, let's erase this by clicking Clear Highlights. So that was for individual symbols, n-gram size of 1. Now let me show you n-gram size of 2. So now we want to find repeated bigrams. Bigrams are pairs of symbols. 
So I put in a two, I click update. Let's pick a random color. And then now when I move the mouse cursor over the cipher, it shows me bigrams. And then whenever we find a repeat, let's find a repeat. So here's a repeat. The, the repeated bigram is automatically highlighted. So you can see it there at the bottom. So when I click that, it sets that highlight. Let's look for some other ones. Here's an IO. So let's mark that. So as you scroll around, you can find these patterns. The 340 also has a few trigrams. So let's do n gram size of three. We'll update that. Let's clear our highlights again. So there's one, the IOF. And then pick another random color and look at, so there's the other one, FB and backwards C. So this gives you a simple way to mark up things that are interesting in the ciphertext. So let's point out some of the interesting things. Here's our pivot. Pick another random color. Here's another pivot. Now let's look at the box corner patterns. Let's mark his signature. Maybe some of the words, where it looks like there's words in the ciphertext. Now let's look at some of the other features. If you go to the edit menu, you can edit the ciphertext directly. And this allows you to put in your own ciphers if you want. Or you can manipulate the Zodiac ciphers into different arrangements if you're exploring different transpositions of the ciphertext. Now the unique thing about edit mode is you can type the symbols in directly. So you get a text box where you can edit the ciphertext. And on the right, you can see the key, which tells you how to type these cipher symbols. So let's erase this and then we'll make our own cipher. So say you use the letters A through Z, you get the normal symbols, the normal letters of the alphabet. But you can also type the special symbols by using these keys. So you can type lowercase z to get the crosshair symbol. You can type exclamation point to get the weird I symbol. You can click the hashtag to get the square and so on. So this gives you an easy way to type symbols. The other thing you can do is if you're moving your mouse cursor over the key, you can just click the letter and it'll type for you. So when I'm done with my changes, I click update and now I have another cipher I can start to mark up. Another thing you can do is copy the cipher text to the clipboard. That way you can paste it into other applications. This will get a transcription of the entire cipher text of the cipher that's currently on the screen, put it in your clipboard, and then you can paste it somewhere. So to do this, you click the edit menu, you click the copy cipher text, then you get a message saying that the copying was successful. And you can go over into another application, such as Notepad or some other text editor, and then just paste the clipboard. And then you'll get the transcription of the cipher text. And this corresponds to the transcription key that we saw earlier in edit mode. So when we went into edit mode, we saw the key here. And this tells you which typable letters correspond to which of the Zodiac's cipher symbols. And this is useful because then you can copy and paste the cipher around. You can share the cipher. You can manipulate the text easily in a text editor. For instance, if I wanted to swap the bottom and the top half of the cipher, I could just cut it like this and then paste it at the bottom. Maybe I want to switch some lines around. I want to move this line down here and then the last line all the way at the top. And then I can put this back into the Cipher Explorer tool by selecting this, copying it, go into edit mode and then pasting it onto the existing ciphertext there. 
And then when I click update, I'll see my manipulated ciphertext, and then I can start marking it up or doing whatever I want with it. So that's basically it. Mainly this is a tool for highlighting the ciphertexts and pointing out interesting things in the cipher. If you're trying to experiment with manipulations of the ciphertext, you can do that in this tool and mark interesting regions of the ciphertext or something that you're trying to describe to somebody. Eventually I want to add more features to this to incorporate some of the more advanced features that I've included in some of my other online tools such as the web toy, which allows you to try to crack the ciphertext and the features from the Cryptoscope tool, which has a lot of statistics and number crunching and pattern matching and things like that. Eventually, I'd like to put all those in the Cypher Explorer to kind of make things easier to find and just to have everything in one place. I don't know when I'll get a chance to do all that, but we'll see what I can do. So thanks for watching, and I hope you find the tool useful.